Al Nazareth. Welcome to the channel, Kahani's Golden Bites. Thank you for taking your time to be on the channel, Carl. Hi. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm so excited about this. Thank you, Carl. So, Carl, for the benefit of our viewers, may I please request you to give a little background about yourself, please, Carl? Yeah. My name is Carl Nazareth. I'm an audio engineer. I work in a studio called TuneIn Studio in Bombay. We mostly work in advertising recordings. Uh, music recordings, video recordings, and final mixing for advertising. For advertising. Yeah. So, so Carl, uh, you've done your, you know, education here in India and overseas. Is that right, Carl? Yes. Yes. What did you study, Carl? So I studied straight straight out of school. I wanted to study audio. I did not know what. About audio, I was I wanted to get into. I had a vague idea. I wanted to do live uh, live shows for in you know concerts and being the guy in that big console in front of that, understanding how sound works. Uh, so I joined uh, after some research. I joined School of Audio Engineering. It's it that's the name of the college, SAE School of Audio Engineering. Uh, there was a branch in Chennai. And it's the headquarters was in Australia. So I finished, I started, uh, went to Chennai first. I did my one year diploma over there. And uh, I wanted to finish my degree. And for that, I, I had various options. And I wanted to head towards the headquarters, which was in uh, Australia, Byron Bay. So that's where I, that's where I continued my degree course. And I was there for about 18 months. Okay. So, Carl, you were very clear that you wanted to get into the sound engineering space as a general term that you know i'll use yeah right okay yeah and, uh, so carl uh, you know you were in australia for about 18 months you know carrying forward you know india and australia so when you uh, went to australia carl did you do any internship did you work there you know how was the, how was the environment compared to you know india where you've grown up and you know comparing that to australia so when I reached there, there was a like it, there was a bit of a culture shock for me. Over here, it, there's still some kind of uh, you still have your parents helping you out, dropping you. You know the college is still in touch with your your parents in in a in a heavy way. To begin with, from the most smallest thing of that, when when you're there, even in college, there's no no one asks about parents or like you know oh the marks will go to your parents and you know what is going on. It's it's straight you. It's about you, including accommodation. So I was in student accommodation and uh, it was straight like you, you pay your fees, you do this, you do that. Okay, you need to go here, you need to go there. This is, uh, you need to go to the bank, fill this. It was very straightforward. It was from, uh, and I was, I think I was about 19, 20 years old then. And from coming from a very protected environment in, in Delhi, then going to Chennai, my parents did everything for me, including, you know, finding accommodation and everything to being thrown into this uh, space where you're first time doing everything yourself. So it was, uh, it was quite uh, eye opening. It was like, Oh, I have to do, I have to do this myself. It's time to grow up now. <laughs> uh, there was even, when, even when it comes to college, the, the work, the, the studies was very different from how I would compare it to India and in India when I did it in Chennai it was very straight you get you get a subject you get your notes you have an exam and you get your marks uh, over there there was no notebooks there was no anything it was it was a straight lecture a PowerPoint presentation which you would not get so you either write it down or you lost it and um, straight practical exams. There was very few written exams. I think if I can count, it was only one for music theory. But other than that, everything was practical based. And I remember my lecturers even telling us that the more you practice, the more questions you will get. Then you come to me. Otherwise, there's, it's pointless sitting in the classroom. So, you know, we were pushed to, you know, find our own way we were pushed to find our own uh, space do our own research how to research even on the internet we had a dedicated subject for research and what you do how you do it even if you find a quote how to reference it everything so it was again very different from what what i'm used to yeah. but 
it really pushed me and you know trying to learn things myself rather than being you know um, being dependent on a notebook that oh this is not part of the curriculum so i don't need to study this it was it was like free for all i didn't unfortunately get any work experience in my field because it was very specific because your field was so specific uh, very niche uh, you know it's not one you know something for the masses so to speak in terms of yeah. you know practical experience etc so you had uh, so you couldn't you weren't able to get any work experience in australia correct is that no. right no unfortunately i i i mean we had we had a few job opportunities in college itself which was filled extremely fast within with any vacancy but uh, studying abroad is uh, one thing is everything you'll find out everything is expensive from like something that you buy a bread and eggs which would cost you less than 60 rupees over there if you if you convert it it's like 500 rupees so instantly you're like okay i need to get a job <laughs> i don't know what i'm going to do but i'll i'll need to figure out and get a job i was lucky enough to work part time in an indian restaurant uh from i mean starting from you know waiting tables again something that was very very new to me uh but you know as i started working there part time it was uh, i started managing things little by little and i had i had a my boss who was who has become a very close friend now uh we started working together and uh, from you know just waiting tables and finishing my work paying getting paid early and leaving to you know sitting with him after the restaurant tallying bills tallying stock uh i say this only because that is one of the most uh, that was one of the most important things i learned in in australia actually to work part time to understand how a restaurant works and uh, to basically understand management in a in a more practical sense and as i came uh, came back and i started working in studios i have taken over a studio of my own i don't own and own it but i have been given the studio to run myself and i've been running it for 4 years now and i think i would not be able to do that unless i work in an indian restaurant <laughs> wow so so what you learn there uh, you know just to earn a little you know extra bucks mm-hmm. is actually helping you today as you you know work right 100% i i owe everything to that to that job to be honest amazing so kan what are you doing right now uh, you're back in india right so yeah. why did you decide to you know you come back to india you could have stayed back in australia got yourself a job and you know you come back to india so you know uh, Does India have those many opportunities? Uh, what, actually, what's been your experience, Carl? Sorry. Um. Actually, uh, when I was over there, I was. It was like I mentioned. It was a one-year course, which I've ext- extended it by another half a year, so it became about eighteen months. But I was still not qualified to, you know, apply for a temporary visa. I would have to do another course, and looking at the people who. stayed back and who started working it 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 is quite challenging especially like i said in in the field of audio engineering a lot of people branched out started doing other things for me it was always even i kind of knew that before i went to australia that i will probably have to come back i will try to stay if, if possible but for me it was very clear i wanted to learn as much as possible it was not much of a okay this is an opportunity to stay there it was more like i need to learn as much as i can so when i come back i will you know i have kind of a step up on things as much as possible and and carl what are you doing now uh, in mumbai so uh, when i came back right now i'm i'm working in a studio called uh, tune in studio mumbai um, right now we're mostly the studio is mostly dedicated to advertising projects but i am doing a lot other things in the side i'm using the studio as well i'm working on a feature film right now which hopefully should be done by end of next month and in the pipeline there's another web series for sony live wow so kal you are now you know in the thick of things making a lot you you've made a lot of you know worked on a lot of advertisements that we see on tv and on the mobile phone and yes. the big screen we seen plenty of it without knowing you are behind all of that you know so thanks to your facebook you know get to see some of them and mm-hmm. uh, so now you're working on you know movies you're moving into the you know film industry space as well as the web series which is you know the 
the big explosion that's happened. So you're in the thick of it. And uh, any regrets, uh, Carl, coming back to India? You seem, your hands seem to be full though, but you know. Not at all. I have absolutely no regrets. <laughs> absolutely no regrets. I think that's something uh, what Australia did provide me was these big, uh, big uh, boards with big equipments and, you know, things that uh, we don't have it on every studio over here. But what happens is even when I start, when I step into a studio, which has these big boards or even half of what I'm used to, I'm not shocked. I'm like, oh, okay, I know this. It's fine. So I think that automatically has that. I mean, I do have that little confidence like, yeah, I know this. So I can work this. And in Australia, we had about six studios in one facilities with absolutely different equipment. So, you know, you were pushed to learn everything and learn everything in a very small period of time. So you, we were trained to like, when you enter, you need to know what you're doing. Otherwise, you're not worth being there. And that's something I, I think I have. So when I enter, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, I, I'm cool with this. It's new, but I'll be a little slow, but I know what I'm doing. So Carl, uh, you know, you chose, you've chosen this field of, you know, sound engineering, how, how did your family take it? You know, what is the background, uh, you know? It was much easier for me in, in comparison to a lot of my friends in the field. Um, I was extremely lucky, one, to have a very musical family. So they understood, you know, what, how music recording happens. Maybe not in detail, but they understood that there is a field on this. And I was uh, extremely lucky when uh, my aunt married an audio engineer who works in Dubai. So it, it, half of the battle was like, lo- like one right there. And in, in all honesty, I didn't even know the term audio engineering till I met uh, my uncle. And from there, I think my parents, uh, I don't think my parents ever had any objection in me doing this. They were, they were hesitant. They were like, maybe you should do something else, like, you know, a normal job or a normal, Tech or, you know, yeah, just form or a BS or do correspondence college somewhere in the side, you know, just so that, but I don't think my brain ever worked in any other direction other than, you know, music and audio. So when I got into it and things started to work out and, you know, I started going to college, I understood what I wanted to do. I think I had a, a huge amount of support from my family and, even when I came back, it was not as easy. It was not like I came back from Australia and I, you know, it was, I got a job and I'm getting paid well. It was, it took a lot of time for me to, you know, get my bearings. But throughout that, my, my mom and dad, even my entire family actually were always in support. They were like, it's cool. It'll take time. Uh, you just do what you're doing. And, you know, I think I only past four or five years, things started to work out and, you know, things started to, you know, shape up and I started to climb the ladder properly. So that's great. I mean, you you were, you know, you're lucky enough to get, you know, the support from your family right through and through this entire journey. Very lucky. <laughs> Very yes. lucky. So, Carl, if I may ask, are you married? Uh, yes. I mean, it's a person. It's, you're married? Okay. So how does your, you know, better half take this? You know, how does she take into this? Uh, it's Actually, good, but if, you know, we can avoid that question, you know. Sorry, I didn't get you. I, no, lost I, I know it's a bit, it's a personal question, but uh, you know, if you want, we can avoid this question, you know? No, no, not at all. Actually, th- that that's probably one of the most important things uh, also with my family. Uh, throughout my journey, I met my wife in Chennai my first year of uh, college. So she's been with me throughout the journey and we've actually had an audio journey together. She's now, she's now a successful music director herself. She, she chose the music line. I chose the audio line. So it kind of, there's no classes as well. <laughs> but she she was with me in Chennai. We went together to Australia, came back, slogged, got jobs, started working ourselves, got married, and it's been four years happily married now. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. So she's taken the music line and you've taken the audio line. To me, you know, I thought the both were the same, but uh, that's the limited amount of information that I have. So, Carl, uh, you know, as you become, you know, more and more famous and hard to get, I'm I'm glad I got, you know, some some amount of time from you at this stage. Uh, later on, it'll get difficult, but I want to also take in the moment to, you know, thank you, Carl, for taking your time. I know you're busy, you know, 
always behind and hard to get. But thank you very much for your time, Carl. Thank you for coming on. Not at all. It was my pleasure.